where I was at the weekend, there was queues and queues of, um, of people possibly panic buying, which is what uh, some of the I didn't see panic saying. buying, but I did see a lot of uh, forecourts that we had sold out. Yeah, and and I worried think, people driving around. Yes, know? and of course we've got 21 and a half million people on the road uh, this week for Easter. Yep. Uh, and, of course, you know, there are lots of questions over whether there's going to be enough fuel for everybody because of um, these protests that yeah. have been going on. And the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has called um, the protests by eco-activists as selfish and fanatical. Demonstrations were held across the weekend in oil depots uh, and on bridges in central London, uh, which saw dozens of people arrested. It affected the Midlands too. Um, and it may well spread across the country if these protests carry on. Well, obviously, the climate activists involved say that they need to bring an end to the use of fossil fuels. So are they in danger of turning people off that cause by these actions? Well, let's, uh, let's have a chat. Joining us now to discuss this is Miranda Wheelerhan. She's a Just Stop Oil activist. She says that we have to move away from oil for good. And journalist Larry Turner, who thinks that activists are irritating when they disrupt travel and they block roads. We'll come to you in a minute, uh, Larry. Um, many people would agree. Uh, that we have to wean ourselves off oil, we have to wean ourselves off fossil fuels, we have to develop re renewables. I, I certainly feel that. Uh, but at the same time, they deeply resent having their personal lives massively interrupted by the actions that people like, like, like you are taking. They can't get fuel for their cars, they can't get fuel for their central heating systems, they worry that if something bad happens, that an ambulance won't get to them because that won't have fuel. Do you accept that you're possibly alienating people who, in a general sense, would support your background cause? Um... Because well, you are really aging. Yeah, really are. I mean, I would say I don't think any of us want to be disrupting people's lives, but I think given the science and the things that academics are saying about what oil is causing around the world and in this country too, this is the level of action that needs to be taken when our government is failing on their energy policies and their climate pledges. But you'd accept, wouldn't you, that it's a very complicated discussion to be had. It's a very complicated thing. And this Just Stop Oil slogan is very playgroundish, isn't it? It's very Vicky Pollard. It's quite childish. <laughs> Just Stop Oil. I mean, come on, there's more to say than that, isn't there? I would say that the answers are actually very simple. We need to stop new oil licensing, and that's all we're asking. You know, with the oil reserves that we have now and the oil fields that we have that are still going, that would provide us with eight years of oil if we said no to new oil, and that's all we're asking for. But We've how seen... do the blockades advance that argument? They, do, they don't, do they? They simply cause nothing but disruption and you, and you get a negative reaction. I've got to tell you, we, we were expecting to get some messages of support from our viewers for you. Mm -hmm. We haven't had one, not one. We've had nothing but, but furious complaints from people. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing positive at all. I wonder if any of you have read the latest IPCC reports that have come out this year. Yeah. You know, what they have said is that we are on the road for climate catastrophe. We are on the road for three degrees of warming. This will happen to my generation, to your children's generation, potentially to your grandchildren. And I think we have a moral responsibility to act now. You know, we're supposed to be climate leaders. We're geopolitical leaders. We could set the way for the, for the whole planet by committing to stopping oil moving to energy efficiency, moving to renewables, moving to yes. insulation. And I think the children and the future deserve at least well, that. There are, uh, from, I think, 2020, Lowry, um, the source of UK electricity from renewables outstripped what we use from fossil fuels. So we are, as a country, moving in the right direction, but clearly not as fast as we should be. And that is the problem. There's a sense of urgency that the eco-activists have that they fear that the rest of us don't embody that. And certainly I, government policy might not be, I, I, um, uh, uh, you know, reacting to that sense of urgency, yeah, which think, is required. I think what I... The, the problem I have is, is, is this idea that the one group of people have decided that they are the ones to save the world. And there's a certain po-faced, incredibly irritated... I'm getting it coming up in waves towards me here, like, how dare you question us because we know what's right. I'm going to glue my hand to some tarmac and then I'm going to be a martyr and I'm going to be a good person, while the rest of us can't get on with our date. I mean, you know, with respect, Miranda is 20. I'm more than twice her age. You know, I've got kids, I've got a job, I've got an elderly mother. We have to get on with our lives. Most people feel they're doing their bit. They, they are doing the recycling. They're trying... I can't afford an electric car. I can't afford a heat pump. Most people can't afford that. The people that the campaigners should be focusing on is the government, not on ordinary mm. people. But it's about ego. There's no doubt that we've had a winter without any 
uh, protest, but as soon as the sun comes out, oh, it's eco festival time. And it is a festival. It's a big jamboree. It's let's get on social media. Let's sit down with a placard. Let's advertise to my friends what a great person I am. While the rest of ordinary people who have to go to work can't get to work. What's your response? I'm just, I just can't believe, I just can't believe that that's what you're saying. The United Nations are telling us if we get to 1.7 degrees of warming, half of the population will be exposed, exposed to climate conditions that are unlivable, And that's unworkable. what you're here to talk about, but I suppose the point isn't about saying the facts over and over again, it's about the actual protests and about exactly. the disruption. And, and, and I suppose what, for some people, I suppose, it is the disconnect between understanding what you think you're achieving by creating disruption to ordinary people versus those big, very important issues that we're all aware of, but clearly you are very passionate about. What, how do you think it affects the speeding up of that, but those policies that you want? With all what due is the connection with between all due respect, the two? You're saying that you're aware of this, but I don't think that you are aware... Of you're, I don't think you are aware, and I don't think the government and the media are doing their duty to show how serious this is. But, you mean you know but, but we're we still no. We're trying to uphold the science. The science is being ignored. The academics are being ignored. Is it but ignored? We, but we're not. But we to live, get diesel we, cars after twenty. We live in a democracy, yes. and it's not the right of one small group of people to tell everybody else how to live. Go through it's democratic not... process. Talk to your MP, get, the, get a government elected who is doing what you want them to do. Don't just simply think, well, we can change but everything. I would say, Larry, if that was going to work, it would have worked by now. And I think win, that there is a point to they say. They have to win hearts and minds, and they're not winning well, hearts Well, you talk about minds. democracy. Let's talk about hypocrisy. Now, this is a very typical message, OK, that we've had this morning. This is Jam on Twitter, speaking for many, many people. Everything these stop oil protesters wear or buy or eat was delivered or manufactured using oil. And that includes the glue that they use to stick themselves to the road with. What they're saying is that your protests are, by definition, massively imperfect. I mean, the clothes that you're wearing, to some extent, owe their existence to oil because they were taken in a car or a truck or a van to a shop, you know? There are, there are so many ways that oil Im impacts on your life uh, as, a, as a protester, but you don't acknowledge that. We're talking about crop failure by 2030. We're talking about people in this country right now in fuel poverty because of the prices of oil. No, and you're talking about no, 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 the no, clothes no, that no, I'm no, wearing. No, listen, but this to, is to so now, serious. Answered, to be fair, up to now, you've answered questions, but that's a complete avoidance of the question. What about the accusation of hypocrisy, that actually you owe your lifestyle just as much to oil as the rest of us? If we want to talk about hypocrisy, look at the government that has pledged for net zero Still by 20... The but they pledged for net zero <laughs> by 2050, and now they're looking at opening 42 new oil what fields, about the which will be releasing fossil fuels what into the 2050s. That is a death sentence for my generation and for your children. Are you going to answer that question, or would you rather I just... Not? How can we be talking about individual scale when we're asking the government to change so we as individuals no longer have to Do be you reliant? There are levels of hypocrisy is there any the proof that any of the disruption you have caused has changed government policy. I would say no. All it has done is the government has tried to ban protests. It's been completely counterproductive. In the meantime, the collateral damage to ordinary people has been huge. We've been through such a trauma the last two years. I think there's a question of read the room here. The whole nation has been through this terrible trauma. A lot of people have lost their jobs, have lost their businesses, have lost their homes. And yet now, just when we think we're about to climb out of this terrible trauma, now it's like, can I get petrol to go and see my 90-year-old my mother? I mean, if that is just that's why people are so angry about what you're doing, because because it's, it's selfish, it's How narcissistic, it's ego-driven, and it doesn't change government policy. How do the police treat you on these demonstrations? How have you found their behaviour towards you? I mean, it's not really a pleasant experience, but I think that's a price worth paying when we're looking at the future. And I, I do apologise for disruption but do they that arrest is going on. I don't want to be causing disruption to people, but I genuinely feel like we have no other choice. We have done petitions. You know, there's a man on hunger strike outside Parliament. Mm. He's been there for 29 days and he's been ignored by our government. That is peaceful Could protest. Have been and we've tried. Downing Street or, or Parliament rather than ordinary. But we, we have tried that. We've sent a letter to the government asking for a conversation. There's someone mm. on hunger strike, like I said, we've done mm. marches, we've sat okay. outside, we've tried to engage and it doesn't work, and this is so serious. And I ask you, please, 
to, to talk about the people of this country deserve to know how serious the future is going to be. And yeah. this is minimal disruption for what is you coming. Were you were arrested, obviously, uh, but released without charge. Can I very quickly ask you, how, how long do you protest for before the police eventually arrest you? How, how, how long do you sit there It's for? just... It depends. It depends the tactics that people use if they're locked on or... And but it can be hours, can't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. For, and for those who are planning to get away over the Easter holidays, could they expect more disruption, do you think? I think... The main message is that the government can stop this. I think people will continue to disrupt and cause action because they are desperate here. The government could right. stop this if they commit to no new oil projects. Well, the message from... We have to say the message from four courts this morning is that things are getting back to normal. Yes. Uh, there is absolutely no need to rush out and panic by. Um, that, that many uh, petrol stations didn't have fuel yesterday, do have it this morning, so things are getting back to normal, things are settling down, so we can all be calm about that.